And by the way, there's more than one way to endure. You can endure with confidence and with belief and with a smile on your face, or you can endure screaming and whining the entire way. Now, one of the Greek words translated as endure in the scripture, sometimes in the old, uh, like in Old King James, something might be translated as patience, but really this, the word is the, the better translated endure, has the idea of cheerful perseverance or cheerful endurance. Why are we doing this enduring? Because that sounds like a lot of work. It sounds very much not fun at all. I mean, does enduring sound like it's a lot of fun? No. But I know all of you already have this definition, because pretty much that's the way we understand things in modern times, that you endure because there's a, a reward of some sort at the end. It's worth it in the end. We endure because it's something driving us to endure. There's some, some sort of purpose that we're holding on to that gives us the courage to endure. So I think that's a pretty good incentive because it says that the ones who endure till the end shall, shall? They're not already saved? Why is that word shall in there? I thought there are people who are saved already. Why do they have to endure anything? Don't you know I already made my altar call? I went down the Romans road, said this, whatever. I, didn't, I don't even know what these things are. <laughs> Where is the Romans road? In Italy? I don't know. I mean, and I don't know the prayer. I don't see any verse that shows it. Well, say this prayer and you're in. <laughs> Who's that? It's like in school when you went to take an exam. Some of you, this is the funniest thing. I remember this in school. I watched my friends do this. They would go take a test knowing full well they did not study and then act shocked when they got a 60. <laughs> I'm sorry, it should be like this. Can you believe this? Yeah, you told me you didn't study. <laughs> Why is that a shock? Do you know, I can promise you, I got not one grade ever that surprised me. And so here we have salvation from the same point of view. You, a lot of you, you don't have to raise your hands, were saved out of horrible lifestyles. A lot of you were delivered out of terrible behaviors, personality defects, ways of treating people, mindsets, whatever. You were delivered. Addictions. Those were absolutely deliverances. I don't have any argument. But the ultimate thing that's called salvation, that if you endure till the end to receive, is the forever kingdom. You're not going to compete in a game, and you're not going to be crowned the winner unless you compete according to rules, because if you don't play by the rules, you're going to be disqualified. Okay. The rules. Rules? Wait a minute. Yeshua died, so we don't have to deal with rules. I don't know. Paul somehow, the one you think said all that, seems to think it's important you play by the rules. The hardworking farmer, by the way, in the military, are there rules? <laughs> yeah. And do you need to play by those rules? Or you get in some big trouble, and also you can get some people killed. So if that meant that the whole world now is saved, because he gave his life and made salvation available to the whole world, why are we playing around with all of this stuff? Why isn't he just starting the kingdom now? Obviously, we're all in. Gave it to the whole world. The rest of it seems like, you know, it's just like sort of mocking us and playing with us. If that was the case, right? He's just toying with us. Why does it start the kingdom already? Because it's not that simple. It's about the proving, the enduring, the showing and demonstrating that he can rely on you and count on you forever. If you can't make it to the end of the fleshly life, how are you going to make it through forever? If we deny him, he'll, should, he'll deny us. But if we become him, he's not going to deny himself. That's part of the encouragement to transform and conform it to his image. How many of you saw that when you read the verse? I didn't see it till just now when I was reading it, so <laughs> I don't want to take credit like I knew this all the time. But as I was reading it, that's, that hit me immediately. It's impossible for him to deny himself. And by the way, resisted on to blood, 
How many people here, you don't have to raise your hand, but you have, we have athletes, and some of you athletes have pushed to the point where your nose is bled. Some of you in the military were pushed to a point where your nose is bled. Or you would, you know, have something, bust a vessel or something. I mean, we're talking about really pushing to the highest, furthest limits of what you can do. We're not just talking about resisting unto blood, meaning someone killing you or cutting you or threatening you. I'm talking about you have not yet resisted unto blood, meaning that you pushed it till you actually couldn't push it any further. You should have to earn it. Uh Uh-oh, I'm going to be accused of saying earning salvation. I didn't say earning salvation, did I? You have to earn the reward. Since the beginning of time, man has understood the idea of earning reward. We use that to leverage ourselves and others by giving them the carrot to go after. Here's the reward. Go out and earn it. Should that not be any different from our Heavenly Father? The reward is earned by your loyalty, your trustworthiness, your endurance, your steadfastness, your love for him with all your might, being strength, etc. That's what earns you forever as a reward. The salvation part was free. It's not loving for him to not discipline you. He just lets you just go off your merry way thinking you're fine. If your child gets no discipline, they're going to think that what they're doing is approved and fine. Yes or no? So your father has to use discipline to let you know you're not doing the right thing here. Now listen to what it says in verse 7. But if you endure discipline, endure the discipline, Elohim is treating you as a son. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? If you endure discipline... Could that be the same thing in James when it says enduring trials? Could trials be the vehicle of the discipline? But what he does say is in this case, we can all get the trophy if we all put in the effort. And all he wants to see is the effort. So it doesn't actually have to be a real contest where there's only one winner. Everybody that really puts in the full effort wins. But you got to be willing to endure to get there. See, the problem with the youth system where everybody wins, it doesn't require the effort. If you already know you're going to win anyway and get a trophy, why do you got to put in the effort? Why would you put in the effort? It's different to say that if you keep playing eventually, putting all your utmost, it will yield the reward that you're looking for. But you got to put in the effort. (laughs) 